Hello everyone. In the last video, we have seen different examples of food chain. We have seen how food is transferred from one organism to another organism in a perfect sequence. Each organism in the food chain belongs to a particular category or a particular group of organisms which behaves identically when it comes to obtaining energy. These groups form different steps in the food chain and are called as trophic levels. In other words, we can say each organism in the food chain represents a trophic level. In the pond ecosystem, which we have seen previously, the first link of the food chain was phytoplankton. They make their own food and are known as producers, so they form the first trophic level of the food chain. They were eaten by the zooplankton, which are herbivores. These herbivores are also called as primary consumers and form the second trophic level. Small carnivores like fishes eat the zooplankton. They are the secondary consumers and form the third trophic level. Lastly, the birds which eat the fishes are large carnivores. They are the tertiary consumers and form the fourth trophic level. As we move upwards in the food chain, the number of organisms decreases, which means at the lowest trophic level, the number of organisms will be maximum and therefore in the food chain, the greatest number is of producers. They can be represented by the number pyramid. Now here you can see the number pyramid. Now since we know that the number of producers is most, so at the lowest level will be the producers. Then after the producers are the herbivores or the primary consumers. Then comes the secondary consumers followed by the tertiary consumers. In case of pond ecosystem, the phytoplankton are the producers, so they will be placed at the lowest level followed by the zooplankton, fishes and birds. Some food chains have less number of trophic levels in them. For example, in the case of forest ecosystem, there are only three trophic levels. Grass or plants which are the producers form the first trophic level. The deer is the primary consumer and forms the second trophic level. Lion which is the tertiary consumer forms the third trophic level. The secondary consumer is not present in this food chain. Now we know that energy is transferred from one organism to another in the food chain. So energy is flowing between different trophic levels. First of all, the producers use the sunlight to produce food and the solar energy is converted into the chemical energy. And from there, this energy is transferred between different trophic levels. Here you can see the sequence of flow of energy between the different trophic levels. From the producers, the energy is transferred to the herbivores, from herbivores to the small carnivores, and from the small carnivores, the energy is flowed to the top carnivores. Now, during the flow of energy, all energy is not transferred and some energy is lost in each step. We already know that one form of energy when gets converted into another, some of it is lost in the process and cannot be used again. According to the studies, only 1% of the total energy of the sunlight is converted by the green plants into the chemical energy. When these green plants are consumed by the primary consumers, this chemical energy is transferred to them. Now, during a life of a primary consumer, maximum amount of energy is lost into, in the form of heat to the environment and some energy is utilized for the process of digestion, growth, reproduction and doing work. Studies show that only 10% of the food gets converted in the body of organism and is available for the next level. This data is true for the subsequent trophic levels also. This means that 90% of the energy is lost and only 10% gets converted into organic matter which is transferred to the next trophic level. You can see in this diagram of flow of energy, as we move up, the amount of available energy decreases. This can be represented by the size of the boxes. As less amount of energy is available for the subsequent trophic levels, in a food chain there are only 3 to 4 trophic levels. One important thing to note here is that, that the flow of energy is unidirectional, which means energy once taken cannot be reverted back. For example, the solar energy which is taken up by the plants does not go back to the sun and similarly when the herbivores take the energy from the plants, it does not go back to the plants. 
So in this video, we have seen what is trophic levels and how energy flows between them. In the next video, we are going to see the food web and the biological magnification.